Tony, welcome to Edinburgh and thank you so much for coming north to talk to the Age of Scotland Institute. It's terrific that you're here. As you know, our mission is to uh, equip tomorrow's leaders in Scotland with the knowledge and skills to engage with Asia and beyond that, the, the global markets. And uh, therefore, your talk is very timely. And I wonder if you could give me an idea of the topics that you're going to cover in your speech later today. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, we tend, Europeans tend to think of, Euro of Russia from very much from a European perspective. But of course, the majority of Russia's land area is in Asia. Yep. And Russia has had a very heavy political involvement and economic involvement in Asia. Mm -hmm. And so I, I find it very interesting to ask myself, and what I'm going to share with the audience this evening, um, some discussion of how that relationship has gone in the past, how it might evolve in the future, with obvious implications, actually, for us in the West as well. Yeah. How do you interpret uh, Putin's uh, foreign policy? It seems to some people that he's moved from being a pariah to an obstructionist to almost the, the, the leader of the free world in the West. I think it's slightly paradoxical to think of Mr. Putin as the leader of the free world. Right. But he, um, what he is, is a very tough Russian nationalist. What he is determined to do is re-establish Russia's place in the sun. He started off with a very weak Russia back in 1999 when he became president. Yep. The country was broke. Yep. It was internally totally disordered. Mm. The West was largely ignoring it on big foreign policy issues. Mm. And he has over the um, 20, well, 20, uh, yeah, 25 years since then, um, put Russia very much back in the forefront of international relations, as we're seeing now in Syria, as we saw with regard to Ukraine and so on. To what extent should we trust Vladimir Putin? Well, I, I come from a world, the diplomatic world, where nobody really trusts anybody. But that said, of course, Russia starts out from, with a very different perspective on international relations from what we in the West and what we in Europe start yeah. from. Yeah. We have come to, uh, to, to take pride in a very cooperative world, a world where borders are dying away, where countries are more and more economically integrated. Putin takes a much more Darwinian view mm -hmm. of um, of, of foreign relations, yeah. what benefits Russia, disadvantages the West, and vice versa. Yeah. And when you deal with him, you have to understand that that is his approach. And if he offers you something, as you say, you use this long spoon mm. because you don't get anything for free in, in your relationship with Russia. Tony, it's said that uh, Russia's economy is actually quite weak. Is there any opposition that uh, Putin should be aware of? Russia's economy is weak. Um, they've been hit by most particularly the fall in the oil price, but also by Western sanctions. Yeah. Um, it's not as weak as it's been presented in the Western press. Uh, GDP will go down by about 4% this year, which is about what we in the UK experienced in 2008. Yeah. So bad, but not the apocalypse. Mm. Does this threaten Putin? I would say not. Yeah. Um, the Russian people, even at this time of economic hurt for them, mm are 90% in support of him because of what he's doing in their eyes in rebuilding a, a great Russia. Yeah. And there's no real threat to hear him in the elite either. So the conclusion to draw is that the Russia we're dealing with, led by Mr. Putin, is very likely to be the Russia that we're going to continue to have to deal with for the next five, 10, who knows how long in the future. Mm -hmm. Turning to Asia, if you stand in Vladivostok, Russia definitely seems as if it is an Asian power. Could you comment on Russia's relationship with uh, China, Japan, and India in that capacity? Well, China's the big one. Yeah. And Russia, as their relationship with the West has got worse, so has developed its relationship with China as a sort of counterbalance. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese have been enthusiastic about this. Yeah. Um, Xi Jinping has gone to a lot of trouble to build up his relations with Putin, his yeah. first foreign visit after he became head of the Chinese Communist Party, was actually to Moscow. Before he went to the United States, of course. Before he went to the United States. They have a shared uh, aversion to what they describe as Western unipolarity and imperialism. Yes. And there's a huge economic opportunity between the two countries because Russia has lots of raw materials to sell and China is an economy that's very hungry for raw yeah, materials. Yeah. Actually, the, the relationship with Japan is the other side of that particular mirror. Russia has a very difficult relationship with Japan. They didn't have a peace treaty with, they haven't had a peace treaty with Japan since the end of the Second World War because yeah. of the Kuril Islands yes. dispute. Japan is one of the countries sanctioning Russia as a result of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And from the Chinese point of view, this is all very nice because they also have their difficulties with Japan. Um, and I think economically they would like to build things a bit more, but it's been very difficult. Sure. 
India, Russia has quite a long traditional relationship with, dating back to Cold War mm -hmm. days, and they still have quite a lot of strong economic links. Yeah. Um, and I think they would like to maintain those links in order to prevent India falling entirely into the US orbit. Yeah. And it would be interesting to see to what extent they succeed. As we speak today on December the 2nd, there is a debate in the House of Commons as to whether to bomb ISIS targets in Syria uh, or not. What will be the consequence of the vote that is taken in the House of Commons this evening? Well, I think, I think the likely outcome is that we will join the bombing campaign. Um, I think that, that's the right outcome. I have to say, if the, 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 Daesh are a serious threat. Yes. Um, there are very few countries in the world that can intervene effectively to tackle that threat. Yeah. We are one of them. We should not free ride on the efforts of the, uh, the Americans and the French yeah. and, the, and the Russians. Yes. Uh, but I would also say that, um, and this is from my Russian experience speaking mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. it is important that we do cooperate with Russia on this. They have particular assets there, notably their relationship with Assad. Um, and we should work with them rather than working across them because there's a lot to be gained by our cooperating to, to deal with this appalling terrorist challenge. Well, I'm enormously grateful to you for having come up to Edinburgh. Um, I know that people are very much looking forward to your talk and the questions that, that they will be asking afterwards. A lot of them are lawyers, so I expect there'll be some legal issues they'll, they'll raise with you. But above all, we're grateful to you for coming and speaking to us here in Edinburgh this evening. Thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me.